Hey guys, today we are talking about the new Samyang 12mm f2.0, a potentially perfect partner for the Sony ZV-E10 and a very interesting wide lens option for other Sony E-mount cameras. But is this going to be wide and wonderful like a luscious landscape or wide and woeful like a botched Brazilian butt lift? And most importantly, is that too much alliteration? The answer to that last one, clearly yes. The answers to the rest of our questions are coming up. But first, everything we are going to cover is listed with timestamps in the description. You will also find related videos, and if you'd like to support the channel, there are affiliate links down there too. Plus, of course, if you enjoy today's video, then like, subscribe, and let me know any questions or thoughts down in the comments. But with that said, let's get back to our review and start with field of view and the important question of, what exactly is this? This is a crop body lens. So that 12 millimeter focal length translates into a full frame equivalent field of view of around 18 millimeters, which puts us right at the wide to ultra wide end of the field of view spectrum. And that's great for vlogging because you can hold the camera quite comfortably like this and still get a good amount of background. Or if you want to extend your arm, use a grip extension, you can get some real panoramic wide views with lots of your beautiful background and less of your suboptimal subject. Then there's stabilization, and like the Matrix movies, we have three stories here, but unlike those movies, all three of these are pretty decent. The first we're gonna talk about is catalyst browse stabilization. This is where newer Sony cameras, including the ZV-E10, record gyroscopic data as you shoot, which allows you to do really effective post-production stabilization. The price of that is a crop into the image, so, the Samyang 12mm is a fantastic choice for using catalyst stabilization because that ultra-wide starting point means even after a crop in post-production, you can get ultra-wide and ultra-smooth logs. And most of those advantages are also true if you're using a gimbal. We will talk more about design later, but the lens is light and compact enough to easily fit on a small gimbal like the Zhiyun Crane M2 and give you expansive views along with slick stabilization. And of course, this method will work great with other camera bodies as well. Lastly, one big reason this lens could be a perfect partner for the ZV-E10 is the fact that that new camera has active steady shot, the first of Sony's crop body cameras to include this kind of digital stabilization. Now, it is a long way from perfect, as you'll see in my detailed review of the ZV-E10, but it is better than the built-in options on most of Sony's crop body line for more complex movements like vlogging. The big downside is a huge crop, around 43%. So the Samyang is a great choice because that ultra wide starting point means even after a crazy crappy crop, you end up with a decently wide viewing angle, around 25 mil in full frame equivalent field of view terms. More broadly, or should I say more widely, the Samyang works really well for things like architecture, landscapes, and anything else that can benefit from the huge breadth the lens is able to capture. The lens definitely pushes things outwards a little bit to capture that breadth, and therefore it may not look ultra realistic, but it doesn't look particularly unnatural or obvious in any way. You may also spot some distortion at the edges of the lens, but again, this is rarely a noticeable issue, and it is a common byproduct of most ultra wide lenses. So we get a view which looks expansive, but how about image quality that looks expensive? Let's talk bokeh. The Samyang provides modest but pretty nice background bokeh in an arm's length vlogging scenario. It's subtle and transitions smoothly between in and out of focus areas. You don't get a crazy amount of blur, but it's enough for a pleasing vlog image and solid subject separation. Plus, with a very wide focal length like this, you're getting no real background compression. So, bokeh is never going to be too pronounced. However, you can increase your bokeh quite dramatically by shooting close-ups. Here, the seven-bladed f2.0 aperture shows what it can do, and the results are surprisingly good with a smooth, attractive, and seamless blur. f2 in a crop lens like this will give you a bokeh look equivalent broadly to around f3 in full-frame terms. If you aren't familiar with why, then check out this video for a full explanation. Now, bokeh around an f3 equivalent is still a decently wide aperture for a full frame setup like the a7c that you're seeing right now, so you'll still be able to catch some respectable bokeh mon. Was that a blur reside behind me there? If it was, you'll probably want some bokeh balls, and the Samyang provides decent ones. 
They're nicely rounded and look good overall, but on close inspection, you will see some slight fraying at the edges and some very minor artifacts inside. Just like a doctor once told me, they're not perfect balls, but they should be good enough for most use cases. Another feature which is good is the minimum focal length of the lens when using manual focus, a very respectable 8.8 centimeters. So you will have decent scope to take advantage of that close focus bokeh. And like a Ritalin salesman, we will talk all about focus, but that is a little bit later. Right now, let's talk about price, design, and build quality. The Samyang has a list price of £360, though you can shave a bit off that if you shop around, and I'm sure more deals will become available as we go forward. For that, you get an aperture range from the wide f2.0 we just discussed to a tight f22, all in a light and compact form a spelt 213 grams in weight and with the largest dimension of just 5.9 centimeters in length. Those compact characteristics are great for general portability, but also make the lens a great choice for gimbal setups, especially smaller and lighter ones like the Xeon Crane M2 rig that we mentioned earlier. There's a single focus ring which has a nice grippy texture and otherwise the design is minimal with a single red accent near the front of the lens. You'll also find a 62 millimeter filter thread there at the front, all contained within a metal and plastic construction. The lens is certainly light and has an understated design, but to me it feels more solid and robust than cheap and cheerful, and overall I actually like the aesthetic and the feel in the hand. But how well does that big manual focus ring actually work? As you would expect for a lens of this price, manual focus is non-linear, which means the amount that you move the focus ring by does not directly link to how much the focus changes, and therefore precise, repeatable focus pulls are tricky to do. However, the overall experience is otherwise good. The focus ring is nicely tactile and very user-friendly, with a smooth and nicely balanced rotation action. Realistically though, you are probably using more autofocus, right? Well, if so, you will be pleased with the results in good light. Paired with the ZV-E10, which has great autofocus to begin with, the Samyang will do a very good job with face and eye tracking. It's stickier than the grim floor of your favorite rock club and more responsive than a Scientologist at a Tom Cruise movie marathon. In good light so far, I can't remember a time when the lens autofocus has lost me. Touch tracking rack focus works well enough too. It's not the best of all the lenses that I've tested and it doesn't have a 100% hit rate, but it is good enough and has never really caused any headaches. Low light autofocus, on the other hand, is a different story, causing more headaches than consecutive concussions at a Cardi B concert. So I'd better show you, right? Now, what time is it? And it is time for a low light test. Now, recently I did an in-depth low light video on the ZV E10 compared to the A6400. So that's a good reference point if you want to know the sorts of settings, ISOs, things to watch out for. But the question here is how good is the Samyang? And the F2 lens hopefully should mean we get a decent performance in low light. Right now, still got eye autofocus and we're heading into a darker spot. So this is pretty decent so far. You know, low light is good for a lot of things. Sometimes the less you see, the better it is, like this crazy hair. But what you don't want is inconsistent autofocus, which looks like what we're getting right now. What I found before is things would be okay until you had a more challenging lighting situation. Oh, a crazy cyclist. That man was clearly in a biker gang and I am a hero for defending myself against him. I think we can all agree that and rocking arguably the worst haircut of the modern times. But yeah, I think you can get some nice images, but as we are seeing, the autofocus performance is just a bit too hit and miss to be reliable. Yeah, it's a bit windy if you didn't pick up on that. So it's fair to say this is not the perfect low light vlogging lens. However, if you have even a small amount of light on your subject, like we have here from the Movo LED 30, the results will be much better. But what about our other conclusions? Well, 
I would say the Samyang is overall a good experience and represents pretty good value for money when you compare it to other similar options. If you want that ultra wide view, then the Tamron 11 to 20 f2.8 or Sony 10 to 18 f4 are both significantly more expensive, as well as having narrower apertures, which means less bokeh and likely more problems in low light. You would get some zoom capability with those lenses, and the Sony includes OSS or in lens stabilization, but I don't think that those are attractive trade offs given the difference in cost for my use case. The Samyang is priced in a similar ballpark, maybe even a bit more expensive when compared to the Sigma 16mm f1.4, which is a fantastic lens that I have reviewed in the past and which I use often. The Sigma, however, is a lot heavier and has a significantly narrower field of view. You will find affiliate links for all these options down in the description. So if you're interested in one of those lenses and you'd like to support the channel and the work that goes into these videos, then please do check them out. For a light and compact vlogging setup or truly wide scenic shots, the Samyang would still be my choice. Whereas if you wanted leadership in luscious low light or better bountiful bokeh, the Sigma would be a better choice. The Samyang is nicely designed, has good autofocus and good light, gives you decent vlogging bokeh and gives you really nice close-up bokeh. Overall, that super wide view, decent bokeh performance and compelling compactness are probably the three big selling points of this lens. And if those three match up well with your use case, I think you'll enjoy using it. But did you enjoy this video? If you did, then like, subscribe and let me know any questions or thoughts down in the comments. But most importantly, until next time, take it easy. I definitely need help coming up with more Pokemon names. You've got Blurmander, Blurmelian, Blurizard, Blurbasaur, uh, Blurtle. Yeah, and after that I kind of run out. <laughs>